Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 80. 80? 80. We've, we've done this 80 times? 80 times. I'm Rachel. <laughs> and I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 400 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. 80. 80. We have done this... 80 times. We have done this 80 times. But for somebody, this is the very first time that they're seeing these crazy nuts. That is true. These crazy ketos. They're probably trying to figure out why we call it keto on the couch when we're sitting on a bench. Right. Well, when we started, <laughs> if you go back and look at episode one yeah. through like 60 or 70. Pre-COVID. We were on a couch. Right. And then we decided that we needed to live stream for keto on the couch during the COVID thing because everybody was home and like our schedules were all messed up. And then we did it for a while and then- And then we just liked it. We, we liked this setting because I can put all of the comments across on the screen in a nice thing and it helps editing later because keto on the couch, you know, you guys get like a 40 minute to one hour keto on the couch, but it takes like three to four hours to edit keto Mostly on the couch. Mostly to edit out all of Rachel's nonsense. And then we have to preview it. Yeah. And we have to upload it and then preview it again. Because I have extra nonsense that we missed. So if you ever wonder like why, why does keto on the couch sometimes not go up till noon? It's because- Rachel's got extra nonsense. Well, it's not Rachel got extra nonsense, but we, we edit it, we upload it, and then we find, oops, I missed something. Now I have to re-upload it. Oops. And sometimes again. YouTube takes a while to upload a 45 minute video. Yeah. So, but it's interesting. Like, we're so glad that you're here. If you're yeah. watching the 80th episode and this is your 80th episode with us, or this is your first episode with us, we're really excited that you're here. Yeah. So we had a fun week. It's just been pretty much like screwing around at the house, screwing doing our work. Because- Eating really good food. Of course, I don't have any pictures of our food this week. Getting back into the swing of going to work right. someplace else. I've got my serve shirt on because we just finished doing service. This is right. Saturday night. Right. And it is it is strange, but also exciting and very hopeful moving forward. Like, I love getting to actually teach kids and have the kids in the room. That's very exciting. It, it really is. So yeah, I didn't take any pictures of the food this week, but I can tell you what our food was. We had ground beef. Yes. And we had more ground beef. And we had ground beef like with tomato sauce on it. And we had one of our lasagnas. We don't get bored with stuff. We yeah. can we can get on a kick. Now I have added some extra like salami here and there. Mm-hmm. We are, even though we're not going anywhere, I do enjoy the eggs that are boiled and already prepackaged. Right. It is the best, one of my most favoritest grab and go items. It Favorite. really is my, my most favoritest. We do have some good news though. If you didn't see our live stream, there's there's two pieces of good news. Number one. We have an egg. We have more than one egg. I know. We're, Anthony actually we have texted chickens, me. We have a chicken laying eggs. I cleaned the cage. My mom came over. She's not even coming to see me at this point. She just wants to see, is there an egg? She wants to be the person that discovers the second egg. Because we found the first egg right. one morning. And then the second egg, she's like, I'm going to be there for that. So she comes over. And she's like, no eggs. There is no eggs. Like maybe it was just a fluke thing. And she said, I wonder if somebody's messing with you and buying eggs and just planting No, eggs. because they're coming out warm. But there was an egg today. There Later in egg. the day. Yeah. Well, I so, they, some chickens lay in the afternoon. I did not know that. Yeah. This is news to me. It is? Yeah. <laughs> now, the other bit of news that we have is, if you didn't see our live stream the other day, is that we have been asked to speak at Low Carb Cruise. How? In May. Exciting. Now, we were already going. Yeah, we were already going. We had already got cruise. our tickets. 
and we had already upgraded our tickets so that I have a little bit bigger room because I it's my first cruise in my life. Right. And I am a little bit afraid of close quarters. Now you've told me that this isn't it's not usually bad. Right. But I'm still worried. So I want the most worried. amount of room possible. It's not the room. It's that you don't have any storage. So you like bring like two sets of clothes and no. you're done. It's like seven days. I understand that. Seven days, ladies. <laughs> How in the world am I going to pack and it be a super little bit of stuff? I mean, Lots I guess of bikinis. I, <laughs> no, there's a lot going on in this in this middle area that I don't think is like bikini worthy, but. Yeah, no, seven days, and I am an emotional dresser. It is how I feel, the color, what the fabric is. I don't know how I'm gonna feel tomorrow. You're gonna have to know how you feel because you can't be bringing clothes with you on a cruise that no. like that you don't wear. Like when we go camping, half of the clothes that we bring never get worn. So we need- to, I didn't feel them. We need to be like playing with sticks and you have clothes that go in the camper, they stay in the camper, you come home, you wash them, they go back in the camper, and those are the clothes you're wearing. So every time we go camping, like tomorrow, you're wearing the same clothes. I wanna know. It'll be interesting for our vlogs. Besides people who wear a uniform, cause that's not negotiable, okay? How do you decide what you're gonna wear in the morning? Is it the first thing you grab? Or it like the first thing in the closet. So if I hang like, cause that's Joe, the first thing that's closest to him. No, it's not. It's that's it's how the first thing that I see that fits. Well, I mean, <laughs> obviously, but a lot of times I could I could pick out your wardrobe for you because I just hang it closest to you, and I bet that I could determine what you're wearing. But for that's me, it's how I feel. Like, what does a day feel like? Today feels like an orange day. Today feels like a purple day. Today feels like a short sleep well, day. When we, on a cruise, when we go on the cruise, you're going to have to plan on next Monday is going to be an orange day. Next Tuesday that's, that's, is going to be a blue day. That is tough. So I want to see, how do you decide what Let you're going to wear? Let us know down in the comment section. Yeah. Keto Chow flavor of the week. Another really good ice cream flavor. Chocolate mint. Chocolate mint is not something that I would normally pick because I'm afraid that it's gonna to taste toothpastey. And Chris and Miriam have both said that they've gotten feedback that people think, well, it tastes like toothpaste. I love I it. do not find that to be true. It is very minty. It's very minty, but in a really good way. I think that it tastes like Shamrock Shake. If you were a Shamrock Shake so fan from McDonald's, I think it tastes like a Shamrock Shake. It is really good. And I really I, like it. And the thing is, is that I never want a Shamrock Shake in March. It's always like November. So if you do like Keto Chow, we always like to tell you guys what the flavor of the week is. It's 10% off. And then if you use our coupon code, you get another 10% off. I like deals. And you know, also, I think it was Joe put a comment in our Facebook section, I think it was for this week, that if you like real good foods, which we're not huge fans of it, but some people do like some the real good food it. pizzas and stuff like yeah. that, they're buy one get one free at Publix this week. That is cheap. That is as cheap as you're going to get Because they're ridiculously expensive. Yes. Yeah, so this is like, if you've been wanting to try it, now is the time to now, try it. Now, if you haven't tried it, go check out some of our review videos. I will leave a link for a couple of them up there because we're not fans of the pizzas. They did have a couple things we liked. Like, yeah. I think the enchiladas were good. Yeah. But we weren't fans of the pizzas. And we did end up, because they had something, but they were ridiculously expensive, we made those chicken popper balls. Balls. So good things come out of it. Good things come out of it. And it's still a grab and go option. It Sometimes is. like, you know, I'd rather do that than, than I would rather do that than eat potted meat. I'll tell you that right now. Speaking of which, we're going camping tomorrow. Have you come up with some things for Fear Factor episode number three? I think that you need to give me a big hug because I almost bought some canned stuff at the Dollar Tree. Well, I got good news for you. I came short of doing that. I got good news for you because when we get to the comments section, there's some suggestions for you. Maybe we need to go be, do the oysters again. Or maybe we should do no. potted meat with no. like, mayonnaise. We need to do it with mayonnaise. No. <laughs> I, I feel like we've closed that that the chapter on that book. <laughs> but there were some very strange things at the Dollar Tree that I was like, I'll get that. That's cheap. And then I thought, do I really want to go cheap here? I feel like 
We're learning. I think we've, we've been instructed by several of you guys. Don't and go again, cheap. keep letting us know because everyone is like, don't go, don't go cheap. cheap. Like, like cheap canned fish, not a good idea. We're kind of learning that. Not a good idea. So when I saw like n- such a plain label on like this sardines thing, yep. I thought, don't buy it, Rachel. Just don't. Save that dollar. <laughs> Spend that dollar on something else. <sighs> okay. Um... Do you want to get to, we have a bunch of like update pictures and things like that. So let's take a quick commercial break and then we can come back with Adjunct Professor of the Week with all of the different pictures and then some questions and comments. Welcome back. It's Keto College time. It's Keto College time. This week's Keto College Adjunct Professor, it's not somebody who's really inspiring, it's, They're not inspiring. Well, it is inspiring. That sounds but very we, insulting. We talk about how like it's like somebody who's like inspiring the like community, and this one inspired me to laugh. Oh. Also, I really would like to see this happen. Okay. So here you go. Are you ready? Because it's yes. directed to you. Uh oh. Here you go. Kathleen said, "Do the gray, Rachel. Do the gray." You would rock it, lady. Oh, my Lord. Does that person look way better with gray hair than I do? Well, it's it's like she actually linked a little like video montage in Facebook, but there's no way to put that on here without getting like copyright strikes and stuff like that. So okay. I will put a link to it down below, but it's really good. And it's like a new fad and everyone just is, in time for Rachel. They're, they're dyeing their hair silver. And I would you your hair has been every color. It has been every like color. Like in our marriage. It's been blonde. It's been blue. It's been red. It's been orange. I would love to see you do silver. Thank you for being an encouragement and letting me know that it's okay to be me. Because sometimes we kind of put like pressure on ourselves like, man, why can't my hair grow color? Right. Wait a second. I want to know down in the comment section. Okay, we're going to let majority rule. Oh, Lord. How many people think Rachel should dye her hair silver? Or like, not gray, like not like old gray. No, my hair is like... like dye it silver and then see what happens. Hey, you won't have to color it as often if you have the gray underneath it's it. It's true. But again, the worst that's going to happen, she already colors her hair like every four weeks my anyway. Hair is so silver. why not try it? My- I think it's going to look hot. Oh, my Lord. Let us know down in the comment section. Let okay, me know. Now I'm going to let you finish. But this was funny. Okay. So tonight, I was teaching my class, and I had five-year-olds and kindergartners. That was the class I was teaching. And they said, oh, Miss Rachel, I, I like your hair. It's, like, darker. The last time I saw you, it was, like, orange. Right. So I was like, okay. And so then they started talking amongst themselves. <laughs> I like when Miss Rachel's hair was purple. Well, I liked it when Miss Rachel's hair was blue. And I thought, oh, my Lord. Don't you think? Look at that. That's three different people. I think that you would rock that. I really think you would rock that. I don't know. Well, I think you would. We'll see what they think. I think we, yeah, let us know down below. Whatever in the y'all section. want. Okay, so we have a few updates, subscriber of the weeks, people who put some before and after photos. Now, if you're new to our channel, this is the part where we like to share stories and celebrate you guys, our subscribers. And you're going to hear us say this over and over and over again. We probably sound like a broken record. To Especially people if you're seeing the 80th episode. Yeah. But. The thing is, is Keto on the Couch is all about you guys. It's really the whole focus of this channel is to celebrate you guys and to encourage you, but especially Keto on the Couch, and that's what we like to do here. So we ask you to share your story because your story is going to inspire someone. There is someone out there right now who is going through what you are gone through or what you are going through, and they think they're alone. And that is the worst predicament to be in. Even no matter what you're facing, whatever the formidable obstacle is, the fact that you think you're alone makes it so much worse. And we have learned no matter what we're going through, there is somebody else that is sharing a similar journey. And once you find out that you're not alone and there's somebody there and there's light at the end of the tunnel... It makes all the difference in the world. It makes you be able to dig in and say, I can do this. I can move forward with this. Like, this is not a hopeless case. Because if you feel like you're a hopeless case, and there were times in my life where I felt like I am the hopeless case. I am the only person I know that is going through this crisis. Right. 
when I find that I'm not alone, I feel like I can do this yeah. and I can move forward. And that's what we want. We want you to move forward in whatever health goals that you have for yourself. Yeah, so please share your story. And you don't even have to be at the end of your journey. You no. could be a week in and all of a sudden, like you can get up and sit down without any pain or something like that. I mean, it can be a small thing, but share your story. If you don't have Facebook, then you can send us an email at stories at twocrazyketos.com and we can share it that way. Let me tell you, I'm not at the end of my journey. The end of my journey is the last breath that I take on this earth. That's, That's right. the end of my journey. So it's a constant thing. Even if you think, well, I should be in maintenance by this point. I, we're not in maintenance. Maintenance is life. There's no such thing as maintenance. There's no such thing. It's life. And you have to live it one day at a time. And we're all in this together. Yep. So let's get into the first one is from Trisha. Hey, Trisha. She said, husband, take a candid photo of you edition. I hate pictures of myself. Yes, I said it. My husband loves to take random photos Aww. of me, but never sends me them. But this time I asked him to, and I don't hate the picture. The photo on the left was in October 2018. I hate everything about it. I was tired and miserable. The photo on the right was taken last weekend. Not tired and not miserable. Aww. Make a change. Doesn't matter uh, how you do it. Weight Watchers, Keto, Surgery, or any other lifestyle change. Just make the change for yourself. Let me see this beautiful lady. Oh, how gorgeous. Is that awesome? Um, okay, so Trisha, I would take tons of pictures of you because I just want to see your beautiful face. <laughs> and I think that that is so romantic. Like, how romantic is this? We were looking recently at a video for a campsite because we were going to, like, stay there. And right. I was looking, like, can I see what the campground looks like? And I and this guy took a video, and I'm telling you, all it was was a montage of his wife doing different things at this campsite, riding her bike, you know, swimming, you know, doing a boat. And I thought, this is a love story. Right. This is a beautiful love story that, I, that I'm looking at. Like, it's great that it's at this campground and I get to see what the campground looks like, but this is really just a love letter to his wife. And that's what it is, man. Like, your husband just loves you and wants to see you. And I love that. That's awesome. Okay, next one is from Dawn. Hey, Dawn. She said, I've never done this, but felt encouraged today. And just <gasps> put up a couple pictures. Look at that. Dawn, um, you look amazing. P.S. I have always wanted to be able to wear white pants. It has nothing to do with size. It has to do with, I will be in white pants and a random jar of tomato sauce like just falls in my lap. Like, I am so accident prone. Can you wear light colored colored clothing no i can't wear I, why do you think i you'll never ever see me in a white t-shirt and it's ever. so elegant like that the gray top and the the light colored bottom it looks so elegant i cannot pull it off not me i'm a mess next one is from shirley hey shirley she says isn't it amazing how loud the chubby girl voice can be yes i've been in maintenance for eight months with the occasional hop on the scales i'm navigating owning a small business that i purchased in november 2019 Throughout this pandemic, I have had big dreams of making our coffee shop a one-of-a-kind experience. I offer home-baked keto goods and keto sweeteners along with the normal offerings. Our keto community is finding me too. Oh, I love that. I mention our store because the stress has been playing with my mind. My eating schedule is off. My intermittent fasting has now slowed down and I'm exhausted. I keep thinking my pants feel tighter. Where's my keto high? Who wants to listen to me about keto if I'm overweight? Well, I was brave this morning and finally stepped back on the scale. I've gained a pound. Yes, one measly little pound. I've given this pound a lot of power, too much power. What the heck? I know I'm not alone listening to my old self. I was overweight most of my life and at 57, I'm still trying to navigate my new self. I'm two and a half years into this lifestyle and I love it. Thanks, Joe and Rachel, for all you do and being so transparent. You are both making a difference in this community. Before photo, about 10 years ago, after photo, this summer with our daughter, getting married in two weeks. COVID wedding planned, not for the week. Oh my goodness, let me see her. Oh my gracious, so beautiful. You are right. A wedding in general is not for the week. A COVID wedding is like next level Yeah. amazing. Thank you for sharing that. That is absolutely going to speak to me and speak to so many other people because, yeah, we give that pound so much power. Yeah, we really you do. You have gone, I, I just love how you said it. First of all, thank you so much 
for starting a keto coffee shop with keto <laughs> offerings. Like that is so great. I love that. And you're spreading the word by this delicious baked goods. If nothing else, you're letting people know, no, it doesn't taste bad. No, right. you don't have to have a ton of carbs and sugar in order to enjoy a tasty treat. I love that. Thank yeah. you for doing that. And thank you for saying what you said, which is let's not give these pounds power. Right. I love that. Thank you. Okay, we got one more, and this one's from Claire. Hey, Claire. Claire said, I normally really dislike pictures. I can't believe I'm even posting this. Today, I decided to finally find a comparison picture from two years ago and then took a selfie today. My brain needed to see this because when I look in the mirror, I see very little body change. Body weight are not my main goals. I'm working on reversing my type 2 diabetes and body changes, and I've uh, been a positive side effect. How many things in life can say the side effects are positive? Right. Here's to the proper human diet. And here's her photos. Beautiful. Beautiful. I can relate to the whole like looking in the mirror and not seeing a change because I still do that, right? I still look in the mirror. Rachel yells at me all the time. When I look in that mirror, I see the 280 pound Joe. You're so tough on yourself. I, I, but that's what I see. I mean, I still don't like pictures taken of myself. It's not until I see a photo of myself like standing next to Anthony where I can go, okay, I've lost weight. But even when I edit videos, like Rachel will tell you, like, I'm like, I can't use this video. Like I look so fat. Like, I mean, yeah, I put on a couple pounds during the COVID thing, but I'm still like under 195 pounds. It's just, it's the way your brain works. Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> okay, let's get into some comments. Uh, first one is from Amy. Hey, Amy. She says, does anyone have a basic starting plan? Just proteins, greens? I hear so many conflicting reports about fat if you have a lot to lose. Okay, so if you're just getting started on keto, Yes, there's a lot of conflicting information. You're going to have people tell you, you can't eat enough, too much protein. If you eat too much protein, it's going to turn into sugar. You're going to hear people say, if you have fat to lose, then you don't need to eat fat. It's overwhelming sometimes. It, it can be very overwhelming. And I want you to just think about it like the way Dr. Barry says. And here's like, we have like, if, if you go watch our original videos, it's very different from the way we feel now. Why do we feel differently now? Because we've educated ourselves more, because science has shown more. You know, it used to be thought that if you ate too much protein, your body was going to just immediately go into gluconeogenesis, but it doesn't work that way. Now they've learned that it's a demand-driven thing, not a supply-driven thing. So when you're getting started, you want to eat fat to fill you up. You're using it as what a lot of us say is a lever. A lever. So eat like Dr. Barry says, like eat a bunch of meat, until you're full. Mm -hmm. Try not to eat a bunch of carbs. You like you want to keep your carbs as low as possible, but don't go over 20 total carbs. So like forget the net carbs. Don't even start off on that bad foot. It just becomes a crutch. Just yeah, make it super you can even say 30 total carbs. It's right. not like it's a magic number. You're just trying to reduce your carbs as low as possible and I feel like if you just start out and do total carbs and don't try to bring in a math equation, then nobody can like pull the wool over your eyes. And then what you can do is you can be like, well, we do, and I would not advise this when you're first starting, but like we have like our cheat day or our dessert day, we take our 20 total carbs and we turn them into 20 net carbs. But but we still make it, we can't have more than say 40 total carbs. And it's just to put a limit so that we don't overdo it Pick on like keto treats and snacks and things like that. But eat as much as you want. The only thing you're worrying about is not eating too many carbs. Once you get fat adapted, which is going to take a few weeks, and that's where your body is going to be like, okay, I'm supposed to be using fat for fuel, then you can start dialing back that fat a little bit because now your body can start going after the fat that you have stored. But when you first, if you, if you cut it back too early, what's going to happen is your body is going to be like, hey, I'm hungry. I don't know what to do. And you're going to go through like being lethargic and tired. We, we talk about it as the keto flu, which comes from electrolytes, but also your body doesn't know what to do with, with the fat. So you want to make sure you're just giving yourself enough fat to keep you satiated to get your next meal. And you'll find you can start cutting it out. You also want to deal with the emotional side of it. Yeah. You're already going to think, you know, our mind goes to, I can't have stuff. I feel deprived emotionally. Like I'm upset by this because you're saying no, you're putting a fence around stuff. So 
it helps to be full right. as you are making the transition in fuel from carbs to fat. Yeah, so the biggest thing is just cut out the carbs and eat the rest as much as you want. I wouldn't even tell you to like limit yourself to like only one or two meals when you first get started. Eat as much as you want throughout the day and you're gonna find you're eating less and less and less and the yeah. next thing you know, you're gonna just only be eating one or two meals a day. The only thing I do want you to make sure you're eating enough of is protein. That protein, that is like you a goal. You have to get that much protein. Yeah. You don't want to under eat protein because then you're going to lose muscle. Your hair is going to fall out, all that kind of stuff. It's okay to go over, but don't go under your protein goals. Okay, next up is Carly's Mama. Hey, Carly's Mama. She says, great job with the use of deserve as a trigger for us to open a doorway of behavior issues. We as food addicts have trained our brains with food. Also love the concept of never the perfect time to put our health first. Today is a great day to start. I was right. starting to use intermittent fasting as a means to get through the guilt of a slip up eating, um, eating day and had to stop that. So now my focus is loving myself and forgiving myself so that I can heal myself. Blessings and keto on just do it. Thank you for sharing that. That yeah. is so important. Yeah, we can't live our lives punishing ourselves and rewarding ourselves. That is not a good relationship. If you can think of yourself as, you know, I am my friend. How would you treat your friend? You wouldn't like if they please you, reward them, and if they displease you, punish them. Right. Like you would not have that relationship with a friend. And we are the friend of ourselves that we right. spend our whole life with, right? That's right. But we say it all the time. People ask us like, well, what do I do when I have a slip up? What should I do? Should I fast? Should I do this? If you have a slip up, move on. Yeah. Don't have the attitude of like, well, I screwed up this meal, so I'm going to finish up this meal. Or I, I had a bad meal, so now I'm just going to have a bad day. Because what happens is, is the little snack that you had that you weren't supposed to have becomes a meal which then becomes the whole day's meals, which then becomes the week, which then becomes the month. And the next thing you know, you're right back where you started. So if you have a slip up, jump right back on the horse with the very next thing you eat and just go back at it. We always tell people, if you do have an off plan day or whatever you want to call it, to me, the worst thing you can do is like fast to punish yourself because that's a binge and purge mentality. And it goes back to the friendship. Again, see yourself as your own friend. What would you do if a friend did something wrong? You would forgive them. You would choose to move on. You wouldn't enable them to continue right. bad behavior because you're a friend. A friend would hold the, another friend accountable, but you want to move on from that. Yeah, I love that. Next one is from Mike. Hey, Mike. Mike said, I'm excited to see Rachel eat some liver. Mike. I will never eat bugs voluntarily unless I am locked in a third world prison and I'm trying to survive. That is a very tight window for his bug consumption. It is. Like he has a very specific way to eat bugs. I feel like it's going to be a long time with the amount of keto chow that he has though. Yeah, he's going to all like have delicious food and yeah. never get to bugs. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Stephanie. Hey, Steph. She says, putting this out there for Rachel and Joe before I forget, hoghead cheese. Just happened to see some while shopping online at our HEB. <sighs> Stephanie, hoghead cheese? Is that a hog thing? I don't know. I've never heard of it. Do they sell that? I've heard of head cheese. We should get some more head cheese. We've had that. But get it good. Get Like, that should be your Whole Foods purchase. That should be one of those, like, expensive box ones. The problem with head cheese... It to be the real stuff. It's not the taste, it's the look. It is <laughs> When look. you look at head cheese, that's the real problem with it. Yeah, because there's all this stuff in it. At least the lunch meat option. I'll tell you another one I never understood. Pimento loaf. Oof. My mother... That was pretty much my lunch meat growing up. I don't know why. She must have really liked it. But like the other kids were eating like a bologna sandwich or turkey sandwich. I had an olive loaf. We ate liverwurst. Sandwich. It was not tradable. Let's just say that. It was not tradable. <laughs> okay, next one is from Renee. Hey, Renee. She says, look, Rachel Warren style for top shelf at Walmart. The cooked ham? Above the potted meats and spam. Oh, dear yeah. God, it's pickled pig's feet. Oh, Lord. And the dried beef that I mentioned. Oh, man. My dad used to use this to make SOS, and we always reuse the little glass jars as juice glasses. It's quite salty. It's pickled pig's feet. It's pickled pig's feet. In a very affordable way. I told you way. that we've got some recommendations. Oh, my Lord. Got another one. You want to see it? No. 
Yeah, Christopher put this out. Single Dollar General store for the win. Single serving spam. Okay, so I will do the spam. Let us do the spam. But the pickled pig's feet for only $3.50. For $3.50, we have to We're do it. We have to go do that one. And we get a juice glass. You know, I saw that Christy Davis had a thing up that there is a jalapeno spam. Okay, I could probably I do that. I feel like we need to do that one. I don't mind doing that. Jalapeno? Like, but I mean, it wasn't a bad taste to me. I honestly have to say the spam was decent, especially if you put it on a stick and put it over open fire. I'm going shopping tomorrow morning before we go to camping. We're, ugh, we're getting the pig's feet, aren't we? Okay, next one is from Shannon. Shannon says, I would like a simple definition of the proper human diet. Is the focus on the number of carbs? I can't wait to view the PhD sessions in the coming months. I sure hope your emceeing moments are included. Thanks, Shannon. Um, well, first of all, uh, if you did purchase tickets to see the Pro Proper Human Diet Summit, I know that they are out. The access for it is out. Um, you're just going to use the same links that you had before, but Dr. Barry emailed everything out. I do know that they are going to be making them available to people who weren't able to purchase tickets for the summit. Which is cool. That's sometime in November, I think, is when Nisha yeah. said. Uh, but um, we are in like the different videos. They do have our intros in each one, at least the nice. ones that I saw so far. So Fine. I haven't watched them all yet, but it's really some interesting stuff. And I like rewatching it over and over again because you always miss that. Oh no, you have to get a, a like a notebook. Yeah. And take notes on it. There's a lot of stuff. Now the answer to your question, if you did watch it, watch Dr. Barry's thing, but what is the proper human diet? And it's one of the reasons you're going to hear us referring to it a lot more. Because I don't know if you all saw what they did with Dr. Barry in Women's oh, Day magazine. Man. They put this nice so picture of him and you know they interview him about what is the proper human diet and they put this thing across Banner like, across it. Like basically telling you you're gonna lose like seventy five pounds in four hours. You know, I mean that's what happened yes. with the word keto because it was like I forgot even what the I I was so upset by seeing the title but it was like what was it like lazy keto hacks or something like that does he seem like a lazy keto guy to you he's not going to be teaching that but that's what the implication was so he has asked a lot of us to or all of us to start referring to keto or whatever as the proper human diet because what is it you're eating whether you're eating keto or you're eating Atkins or you're eating carnivore, it's all the proper human diet. And it does two things. Number one, less people will argue with you when you use the term proper human diet over keto. Because it's less refined processed food. You're eating more whole food right. and less things that are designed to live to, for 25 years on a shelf. Right. Basically, you are shopping the outer ring of an aisle, right. the fresh things, and you are keeping your carbs very low. It's more like meat because that is what a, a human being would be reaching for first. Right. When you can't get meat, the next thing you're getting is vegetables and, you know. Especially greens. Like whatever, not the starchy root vegetables. Whatever little bit of vegetables and fruit that's going to get you through the winter. Well, guess what? Joe and I live in South Florida, so we wouldn't even be going through a winter where we need to pack on a bunch of pounds in order to survive, right. you know, little house on the prairie. it's very hard to grow vegetables down here. Yeah. Now, the other thing for me, before we expand on that, that the reason I like the term proper human diet is it's bringing us back together as a community. Yeah. I personally, again, just my opinion, feel like the community has gotten separated. Yeah. When like, we first found it, everybody was like keto and very happy go lucky. And now you have, I'm keto. Well, I'm carnivore. Well, I'm ketovore. And well, my way is better. And, and Dr. Barry's thing brings everybody back together. Yeah, because we're we're all on the same team. We're all like pretty much anti sugar and anti like highly Brains. processed foods. But yeah, it became sort of like the school lunchroom where you didn't have a table to sit at. Right. Or if you did identify as a certain specific diet, it was like everybody else is like, oh, well, we're the paleo table. So like you can't sit with us. Right. Or like you're the keto table or you're keto carnivore. So like, you need to sit outside because right. like you don't really fit anywhere. And and that's really frustrating because again, I feel like the biggest obstacle to your success is feeling alone. Right. So if you feel like, hey, I don't fit with anybody here, then you're just going to feel alone and you're not going to realize your health goals. Right. And I don't like that. And that's why I like the term PhD and bring us everybody back together. But to expand on what Rachel was talking about, yeah, proper human diet, what is it? You're eating 
whole foods, like one and two ingredient foods. We're attempting to stay away from a lot of the keto snacks. Now, are we all perfect? No. Do no. we have something like that every once in a while? Of course we do. But we try to, most of your diet should be eating that kind of stuff. Meat, eggs, bacon, cheese, um, if you can handle dairy. You know, some. if you want green veggies, do you have to have them? No. Can you have them? Absolutely. Yeah, and while you're talking about keto snacks, we have gotten some feedback from people who get very angry if we do eat anything that is other than like a whole food. And they're like, why are you testing keto snacks? Why are you trying them? Well, because there's a lot out there. And even if maybe you do not want to have any keto snacks at all, at all, there are some people who do enjoy them and we try our best to help you make the most educated decision. Find the ones with the good ingredients, things like that. And also see what the price point is. Right. Because sometimes you may see something that's amazing, but you're like, I am not going to pay this amount of money for it. So right. we try to kind of like take one for the team with different keto snacks. Right. Do we eat every single keto snack that's available on the market? No. Nope. And do we need to police what other people are eating? No. Right. But we try to bring to, you know, your attention, the different things that are out there, especially when it comes to responsibly produced keto foods with good ingredients that are brought to the marketplace that you may not even know exist right. because they're still being made in mom and pop kitchens across the country. Right. And if you're new to our channel, the whole reason we even started doing product reviews is because Dr. Barry, three years ago, one of the first videos I saw on him was like, you have got to get rid of all of the hydrogenated oils, the soybean oils, the cottonseed oils and all that. And we started looking and we're like, oh my gosh, avocado oil mayonnaise is expensive. Because at the time, the only option was Primal Kitchen. Right. That was it. There was no other option. There was no chosen foods. And we weren't making it ourselves yet. And what happened was, is we found a jar of, I don't remember who it was, Kraft or we, Hellman's. We actually or, bought both. We bought a Hellman's and we bought a Kraft avocado mayonnaise. And one of them was olive oil mayonnaise. And we had invested our hard earned money in order to buy this fancier mayonnaise. This was a big step forward for us to, instead of buying like cheap mayonnaise. Because it was like five or $6 for a jar. That's a lot of money for us to invest that. But it was investment in our future. We thought, okay, well on keto, you're allowed to have mayonnaise, but this was one step further. Not only are we going to have mayonnaise, but we're going to have mayonnaise that does, don't have this bad oil in it as like a step forward in our journey. Well, we checked the label and realized that there was a blend of the crappy oils. After we bought it, because we went by the front of the label that said avocado oil mayo. And I felt very upset that I felt like I had been swindled by this company that knew that they were marketing to somebody trying to take good health steps forward in their life. And they had swindled me with the advertising. And I thought, I don't like feeling like that. I don't like being taken advantage of. Is there a way that we can help other people not be taken advantage of? And so that's what started the product reviews. And that's why we will continue to do it. And believe me, as much as some people get upset when we do a product review and they're like, well, you shouldn't be reviewing any keto lookalikes. And I'm sorry, we eat them once in a while. Some people eat them once in a while. Some people wanna have a cracker, but we try to make it with something that has good whole ingredients. But as much as we do that, we're also going to upset a lot of people and we're like, do not eat all these keto bread when the yeah. number one ingredient is wheat. There are a lot of people who get upset and like, how dare you? But yes. we feel when you have companies marketing that kind of stuff or they're changing the name of isomaltose oleosaccharides to tapioca syrup and you're only looking for IMO fiber, like we we feel like it's our job to bring that to your attention and say, hey, like don't eat this product, eat this product. Yeah. So that's why we do it. Ready? Rant over, Sorry. right? <laughs> Off soapbox. Okay, next one is from Jamie. Hey, Jamie. She says, okay, question. Has anyone tried an egg fast? I stumbled across it and I'm thinking about doing it uh, a kind of reset for my body. I'm thinking this might help with some of the cravings I have and to stabilize my blood sugar a little more. 
Even eating very low carb, I'm still getting morning readings way higher than they should be. Of course, I'll monitor my sugar very closely the whole time. I'm just wondering if anyone has tried it, and if so, what your experience was. Okay, we actually have done an egg fast. I Joe's think, favorite. I think we have a playlist. I'll leave a link, or I think it, was, it wasn't a playlist. It was one video. We, we recapped the whole week. I could have done it for weeks. I'll leave that over Rachel's head. Okay, I think you're doing the egg fast for the right reason, which is a reset. I just want to be everybody be clear. There's nothing magical about an egg fast. There's nothing like you're going to do an egg fast and you magically gain, you know, lose gain, tw lose 20 pounds. And it's like this awesome thing. What the egg fast does is it's basically an elimination fast. It's yeah. six or seven days or three or four days of whatever you do where you're eliminating everything else i mean it depends on how you do it but like when we did it, it was egg cheese what was it eggs and cheese right i think it was eggs, and cheese and butter yeah or egg cheese and fat and we, yeah i don't remember it's been a while but it was like one egg for every tablespoon of fat or something like that but basically it was an elimination thing so i think you're doing it for the right reasons yeah the only thing i would say is don't worry too much about a morning blood glucose. Your glucose is always higher in the morning from something called the dawn phenomenon. Measure it when you get up, measure it a couple hours later before you eat. You're gonna find somewhere between that like seven and 9 a.m. it's gonna be much higher than throughout the rest of the day. I still wanna giggle about the egg fast with you. <laughs> I remember your face. I didn't like it. Okay, next one is from Karen. Hey, Karen. She said, happy to be a new member of this group. My first question is related to the silicone Ziploc bags that Two Crazy Ketos mentioned during the PhD Summit. Would anyone be able to give me more specific information on those reusable food bags? Sure. How you like them, which ones you buy, etc. Wanting to send some to my son-in-law for his upcoming birthday. Oh, Thanks. Happy birthday to him. So I uh, will leave a link for those down below. I got them off of Amazon. I searched and searched and searched because they are expensive. Yeah. That pack, I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it was pretty inexpensive and it was like a variety bundle. It came with Different a couple sizes. of little red ones, a couple of green ones. The red ones are nice if you just have like an onion or like maybe like we'll do a pepper and an onion. We'll put it in there. And then, you know, the big green one, like the, the they're good for like bacon and stuff like that. So there's different sizes and it was pretty inexpensive. The one thing that I have noticed about them is, and it, there's no negotiation with it, is they have a little arrow, like how you put the top on. Yeah, and it like has to bag. go that way. It can't go the, it's like. No, it's got one end that's actually blocked and, off. And exit. And I have tried to like force it and jam it because we've bought things that have kind of a similar top from like QVC and stuff. And it's like, no, it's not either way. It's right. one way. It's one Follow way. the arrow. But this was one of the last things that we have done as far as a change. We have been Ziploc bag people. And I mean, a lot of people who've been around for a while know that we absolutely love lock and lock. And we what love we're lock doing, and lock. We're slowly getting rid of that stuff as the containers get, you know, that that gunk that builds up in yeah, them. Yeah, so you're like, like, this that. isn't right. Like, you're looking at it and you're like, I probably should not be eating stuff in this. So, but Lock and Lock does have glass stuff we're, and we have some of those. We're using the glass ones. But we are using, like Dr. Barry talked about, the Lock and Locks and the plastic bags. Like, when we put something in the Cold. freezer or something like that. But we are no longer heating stuff up. And we got the silicone bags really for camping mm -hmm. and then really liked them. Like, the bacon, we just keep resealing the bacon. And we're saving plastic because I'm not like every time I open a new like pla uh, thing of bacon wasting another Ziploc bag well what and I love this because it's one change sometimes you come away from a conference or maybe you've been wa binge watched a speaker and you're like they have a lot of good information where do I start now? Like, what do you do the day after the conference? Right. And there's so many things that you could do that it can get overwhelming. So it's like, do one thing. One change at a time. Maybe you want to get a Berkey. Maybe you want to do the stasher bags. Maybe you want to stop using sunscreen. Do one thing and, and then move forward from there. Because sometimes I'm like, if I don't overhaul my entire life after this conference. It's overwhelming. And it can be very expensive. Yeah. So do one thing at a time. You'll find, we did it. It took us six months to start eating like pasture raised eggs. Because we were yeah. like, wait a second, I'm used to paying a dollar a dozen or less. And now we're paying five and six dollars a dozen. But we also started realizing I'm not spending $150 a month on arthritis medication that was anymore. A, that was a big thing. I'm not going to McDonald's anymore. 
I'm not spending five dollars a day at Starbucks anymore. So you're spending money, but you just start to your budget changes. So just allow for that to happen. And slowly add other things and slowly change out the fats and slow. The one thing I would tell you right off the bat. Dump all the bad oils. That that should be yeah. done immediately. Because you can make your own mayonnaise. Right. Like you, Joe's got a recipe for mayonnaise. So it's not like you have to be like, okay, well, I go from my budget goes up $10, $15 immediately. No, right. you can make your own. But um, yeah, it's episode 80. Yeah. So we've been doing this for a long time. And so it wasn't like we made all of the changes at once. Yeah. Gradual. Okay, next one is from Lynn. Hey, Lynn. She says, I've been keto for two years. In the beginning, lost weight, not much about eight pounds, but I lost a lot of inches. I've not made any changes, but ended up gaining back everything I lost plus more weight. Feeling depressed, I decided to move into carnivore and I'm gaining even more weight. I'm strict, very disciplined, been carnivore for two months now and feel great. My arthritis is under control, my IBS is gone, my skin and hair look great, and my blood work is really good, but I cannot lose the weight. I'm 56, active, I do yoga three days a week, walk four to five miles, four to five days a week, and lift weights. I'm zero dairy right now, and I fast 16 to 18 hours a day. I eat intuitively, so typically OMAD, but if I'm hungry, I will add another meal. Any suggestions? I'm thinking of adding a few carbs. I'm at a loss. My weight is 188 and I'd like to get down to 145. Okay, can I answer this? Yeah. At the risk of sounding mean. Okay. I know you want to lose the weight, but I saw, and that's why I'm leaving this up here. So I saw, much. I'm 56. I do yoga three days a week. Wow. My arthritis is under control. My IBS is gone. gone. My skin and hair look great. My blood work is really good, but I can't lose the weight. If you never lose the weight, and I'm not saying you're not going to, but if you never lose you're weight. You're doing great. But you have all of those other positive effects. Woo. Is it so bad? No. I mean, that does is. That sound bad? Does that sound mean to me? Can I just stop and celebrate that? Yeah. If you've had IBS, you know your life revolves around the IBS. Like decisions that you make, places that you can go, how long you can hang out there. Right. It is all around that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think about like how many um, kidney infections I used to get before keto. Oh my gosh. It governed our vacation. It governed like how long I could stay. There were I'm going to give you one that's TMI, and but Dr. Know, Barry just put a video out about this. I mean, this. the kidney infection is probably no, TMI. No, the, the cold sores, the herpes sores. I have the, what is it, the herpes simplex that manifests in a cold sore. Every time she got stressed, every time Anytime she got sick. Anytime I got sick, stressed, several times a year. And let me tell you, the Three medic- years, hasn't had one. Not one. And that is like, talk about your self-esteem, is when I would have a breakout I mean, I just felt like dirty. Like I didn't want to go out. I, I mean, it was it was such a miserable thing. You know what the cool part about it is? I get to kiss her. But it was just so like it was it was hard. I it was, was bad. I was so thankful when they just mentioned that. Yeah, it, the, the breakouts are gone. Yeah. But yeah, it, it. I have not experienced that. So yes. I still struggle too with with being like the scale is not moving the way that I want in the in the amount of time that I want it to move. But you're doing awesome. Yeah. I am so excited for you. Like this is so good that you're not dealing with those health concerns. It will come off. Continue doing what you're doing. Yeah. I would not add a bunch of carbs to your diet. Yeah. I, I let me address it a little bit. So, Dr. Berry uh, was on our channel a few months ago and we talked about like not counting calories. And he said, if you are eating like pretty much the way you're eating, like one or two meals a day intuitively, can you possibly gain some weight? Yes. You're just not gaining fat. You right. might gain some muscle and some bone density. You're and exercising You're a lot. exercising. So there's a good chance that's what's going on. You could try cutting back maybe a little bit every once in a while. I mean, I, but I would not add carbs. I, I'm just not a proponent of carb cycling and that kind of stuff. I don't think there's any reason in my personal opinion to do carb cycling. I mean, I'm not a doctor or a nurse or anything like that, but I just know every time I even have a little bit too much of a carb and I'm not even talking about bad carbs, I get inflamed and like, I don't feel good anymore. And I just don't think it's a great thing. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep Maybe doing cut it. back just a little bit if you want to, but I would not do too much. 
If you're gaining some muscle, but you have all of those health well, improvements, who cares? And you may want to change things up as far as like eat two meals, eat one meal. Yes. Make it 16 hours. Trick your body with the mat with the uh, make it metabolism. 18 hours. Like change your eating window. Change the time of day. Maybe like you start eating like you're you're the breakfast instead of the end of the day. Just change it up every day of the week. You know, make it a little bit different to just try to vary it. And like you're saying, like trick your body yeah but you're doing great you're doing awesome you're doing awesome well that is going to be the last comment i think it is a great place to end this week keto on the couch how amazing and i cannot believe that i ended keto on the couch talking about like how i used was very prone to like kidney <laughs> infections and like herpes on my face well, we really do appreciate everybody watching us, especially if you're watching all the way here to the end. Now, if you like seeing different videos like this and you want to see the rest of the videos for Keto on the Couch, check out the entire playlist, which you're going to find right down there. That's a lot. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you're going to find right over here. But whether you head this way or head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel, click the little bell icon. That way, every single time I talk about my herpes, <laughs> you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. Bye.